Okay, this lesson is about general angles and radian measure. We've talked about acute angles before in the previous lesson, and you've talked about obtuse angles in geometry. Uh, in this section, we're going to get into angles that are bigger than 90, bigger than 180 degrees, uh, and actually bigger than 360 degrees, and, and on and on and on uh, for an infinite amount of angles. And we're going to look at these general angles, and then we're going to talk about radian angle measures. So first, we're going to introduce some vocabulary. Uh, here we have an angle in blue. So here's our angle in blue. Right, and I have labeled the initial side and the terminal side. And their definitions are over here. So the initial side is fixed. And for our purposes, we're going to almost always have the initial side starting at the origin and going out across the positive x-axis. So for our purposes for right now, think of the initial side as this ray from the origin out along the positive x-axis. The terminal side is the side that rotates. So this blue side here, this terminal side, is going to start here and it's going to rotate to our, to our angle, whatever that may be. So the terminal side is the side that rotates, the initial side is the side that stays the same. And the vertex for our purpose is going to be the origin and that's where the terminal and initial side connect to make the angle. So remember they're both rays, they go on and on forever in one direction. And then ours our vertex. And this is on our standard coordinate plane. So we have our x and y axis. And if you just kind of think of this intuitively, from here to here, that would be 90 degrees. I mean, it looks like a right angle. So that's 90 degrees. And then a straight line, as you know before, is 180 degrees. And so on and so forth. And you know that if you go in a complete circle, that's 360 degrees. So this right here shouldn't be too new, um, dealing with the coordinate plane. But just kind of know initial side, terminal side, and we'll be able to go from there. So let's draw some angles. All right, so we're gonna sketch these angles. And sketch is the key word here, sketch. They're not gonna be exact, or they're gonna be you know estimates and what we think they're gonna be. We're not gonna get out a protractor and draw exactly 165 degrees. We're gonna sketch it. So our initial side starts right here at the origin and goes out, okay? and we're gonna rotate 165 degrees. So before you draw this, kind of think about it, 180 degrees is straight across, right? So I wanna go 15 degrees less than that. 180 minus 15 is 165. So I wanna go 15 degrees, so it's you know, probably gonna be about right there. So let's say uh, we rotate it, and let's call it right there. That's how far it rotates. We'll call that 165 degrees. Just a sketch, just a quick sketch. So you can see it's bigger than, obviously bigger than 90, it's less than 180, closer to the 180 side than it is the 90 side, 165 degrees. This is an angle you should be, you know, fairly familiar with. Next, let's look at 225 degrees. This is a little bit bigger. So we know that it goes past 180, it's bigger than 180, but how much bigger than 180 is it? So 180 plus what gives me 225? Well, that'd be 45. Okay, so I actually go 45 degrees past the 180 mark. Now I can get a pretty good estimate here because 45 is half of 90. So I know that that is my terminal side. My initial side is right here. And there's my angle, 225 degrees. So using the our um, axis as kind of a guide. We know that this is 180, we know this is 90, we know this is 270. We can kind of get a pretty accurate sketch of a 225 degree angle. All right, and lastly, let's look at 450, 450 degrees. So before we even get started, let's draw our initial side. Now we know that all the way around is one is 360. All the way around is 360. So I need to go further than that. I'm all the way around once, and I'm a little bit further. So let's say 450 minus 360 gives me 90. So I go 90 degrees past the 360 degree mark. So that's right here. So here's my angle. This is 450 degrees. When you think about it, it's also 90 degrees. 
So a 450 degree angle and a 90 degree angle are exactly the same. 450 degree angle and a 90 degree angle are the same. And when we have two angles that are the same, we call those coterminal. Because they share the same terminal side. Of course they share the same initial side because all these angles share the same initial side. But when we look at coterminal angles, we're going to talk about angles that share the terminal side. All right, so angles that share the terminal side. That's what we're looking at. So let's find some coterminal angles to these angles we've already drawn. So let's go down. Our first one was 165. So I want an angle that's coterminal with 165. Well, the easiest way to do that is to say, okay, well, here's my angle 165. How do I get back to here? If I start here, how do I get back? Think about it for a second. Well, if I start here, the only way I'm going to get back to this terminal side is go in the positive or negative direction, 360 degrees. So I'd start at 165, and I would go all the way around back to 165. So that's 360 degrees. Oh, a little dyslexia sitting in there. That's 360 degrees in the positive direction. So my angle would be 525 degrees. You could also go in the negative direction and subtract 360, uh, but we'll get into that later. So let's look at our second angle. Our second angle was 225 degrees. So my second angle is 225, 225 degrees. And that looked like this. Okay, and we came all the way around. So now I want to start here and I want to go all the way around in the positive direction. 360 degrees. So I'm going to go all the way around. So my final angle will be 225 plus 360. So a coterminal angle with 225 is 585 degrees. And then lastly, our angle 450 degrees. So we had 450. We already found one by subtracting 360 and we got 90 degrees. We can actually add 360 also and get another coterminal angle. So 90 is a coterminal angle, but if, oh no, I hate when I do that. So if we add 360, so 450 plus 360, we get 810, which is also a coterminal angle. And for this one, we would start with the initial side we would go around once, go around twice, and then end up right back here. That would be our cold terminal angle. So 90, 810, and 450 are all cold terminal angles. They share a terminal side. So that's all with degrees. Now let's talk about radians. And everybody kind of flips out when we talk about radians. Uh, because it's something that they haven't seen before and you know don't get in that mindset we don't understand it because it really isn't that bad it actually makes more sense when we talk about rotation so one radian is the measure of an angle in standard position whose terminal side intercepts the arc with I'm sorry intercepts um, an arc with link R okay so first of all we need to know if we have an a, a circle with radius r okay so this is just some circle with radius r so as you can see from the figure here's our radius right here and it says that that length is r that also means that this length right here is r because a radius is any segment from the center of the circle uh, to the edge so both of those are radii 
and it says that the angle theta is one radian if I go the distance along this arc. So I'm you know marching along this arc and I keep going and I keep going and I keep going and I keep going until I've gone a distance of r. Okay, so whatever my radius is, if my radius is two, then I look at I go a distance of two along the arc and then I stop. That's one radian. And you think to yourself, how many radians are there in a circle? How many radians are there in a complete circle? We know there are 360 degrees in a circle. How many radians are there? Well, if you think about how far do I have to go to get all the way around one circle? Well, that's called the circumference, and that's measured as 2 pi r. Well, r here is the radius. And I know that the measure of one radian is the radius distance. So I've went one radii here. This is one, the distance of one radius right here. So how many times will I do that all the way around the circle? Two pi times. So there are two pi radians. Two pi radians in a circle. So that answers my question down here on how many radians does it take to make a full circle. It takes two pi of them. And if you want to approximate that, that's you know approximately two times 3.14, um, which is approximately 6.3. So it's approximately 6.3 radians in a full circle. But we won't we won't use that. We will use pi because pi is easier and pi is the exact answer. So when we talk about there are two pi radians. When we look at radians, we're going we're gonna to divide them into sections. So we've got 360 degrees, we divide that into sections. Two pi, we're going to divide that into sections. And that's how we're going to find our radians. So I'm going to show you an example. And here is our circle split up into our most common angles. So I, we talked about special right triangles before and said our most common angles were the, the 30, 45, and 60 degrees. Well, here's our circle split up into 35, 45, and 60 degrees on each one. So here we have 30. Well, that's pi over 6. Because when you think about it, this whole thing right here is pi. If the entire circle is 2 pi, then half of the circle would be pi. And you're dividing that half in two thirds. So here's one third, here's the other third, oh I'm sorry not thirds, sixes, I apologize. I don't know where I got third from. You're dividing that into sixths. So you're dividing the, the whole pi into six wedges. One, two, three, four, five, six wedges. So it only makes sense that this is one-sixth of pi, or pi over six. So the angle is right here, this angle right here, this 30 degree angle, is pi over six. And it, it makes sense with the degrees too, because half of 360 is 180, and 180 broken up into six equal slices is 30 degrees. So 180 divided by six is 30, pi divided by six is just pi over six. And that is how we convert back and forth uh, using our degrees and radians. So we can go back and forth between degrees and radians um, pretty fluidly. And we just, to go from degrees to radians, you take whatever your angle is in degrees and you multiply it by pi radians over 180 and you simplify. And just like with chemistry, um, you might not have taken chemistry yet, but your, your units will cancel. Any, any kind of science class, you know your units cancel, and, and that's what happens here in this case. So let's look at some examples. We're going to rewrite each angle in degrees or radians. Okay, to save time, I went ahead and wrote down the first step for each one of these problems. And all you're taking is the angle theta, which is given to you, 25 degrees, and you're multiplying it by the formula. So to go from degrees to radians, we multiply by pi over 180. To go from radians to degrees, we multiply by 180 over pi. And this should make sense because radians are measured in pi. Degrees don't have pi, so if I'm going from radians to degrees, I'm going to want my pi's to cancel, just like they do, right here. Okay, so again, to save time, I went ahead and worked out these answers. Um, just multiply across and simplify. 
One thing I want you to know is that I canceled the pies and I simplified this 6 and this 180. This becomes 1 and 30 because 6 times 30 is 180. And your homework is at the end.